When you think of LA, certain foods immediately pop into mind. Tacos, dumplings, sushi. But there are some that don't always get their due. Chicken sausage, a staple of LA's black community for decades, is one such food. The 1920s and 30s saw an increase in Los Angeles' black population, attracted by potential economic and real estate possibilities. The Second Great Migration, which began at the start of World War II, saw more than 5 million African Americans leave the South, further contributing to the growth of LA's black population. But restrictive racial covenants prevented blacks, as well as those of other races, from living where they wanted to in Los Angeles. So many settled in Southeast LA, in areas like historic South Central, Florence, and Watts. Those who attempted to live outside of those prescribed areas were frequently met with violence. When the Supreme Court finally outlawed these racially restrictive covenants as unconstitutional in 1948, LA's black population began to slowly move west. The exact origins of LA's chicken sausage obsession aren't exactly known. But some people apocryphally trace it to a man named Hooks. About three decades ago, an associate of the legendary Mr. Hooks walked into a place called Mama's Chicken, a restaurant and market that began as a burger shack in the Hyde Park neighborhood over 50 years ago. He began working there and introduced a seasoning mixture for chicken sausage to a woman named Karen Whitman, also known as Mama, who had worked there since 1969. The rest, as they say, is chicken sausage history. That's the chicken sausage burger, and that's the chicken sausage taco. I'm not gonna lie, this looks really delicious. It's onion, pickle, lettuce, and tomato. Delicious, delicious. Nice, juicy burger. I love this. This is so good. And all our uh, sausages, we don't put any additives or preservatives in it. So that even makes it more healthier. So is it a health thing? I believe chicken, it is. Chicken sausage? I really I really believe that it is a, a health thing for most most people. As we learn more about why we have these health issues generation after generation, we try to make a difference. We want to live longer and, and the more knowledgeable you become of why we're having these issues, we try to do something about it. We talk sometimes about the concept of, of a food desert where it's hard for people to have food options nearby that are not just fast food. Exactly. People would like to eat a little healthier, but they don't have the transportation to get to the stores that make it available. Uh, the, kind, the type of food that they really need to eat. And so they go to the mom and pop stores, anywhere where they can just walk there. And most mom and pop stores, or convenience stores, do not have produce because it's a short shelf life. Right. And it's up to the owner to pretty much take a stand and say, well, I would rather for the people to be able to come here and get something healthy. People really love this chicken sausage. What do you think it is about the, the spice mixture or, or, or what, what do you do to it that you think really makes it distinct? We use everything that we would want to eat ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whatever I eat, my customers can eat it also. Mm -hmm. I really have never ever tasted anybody else's sausage. When my yeah. customers told me that they had tried everybody's and they felt that we were the best and we hear it consistently, why do I need to taste okay. someone else's? Some people feel like they need to know the competition, but you say, you know what? We do what we do here and I feel good about it. I know that, that I feel that they're eating the best. What was this stretch of Slauson like in, in the in the 60s? What do you what do you remember about it? I was practically a toddler, but I can tell you a little something about it, okay? <laughs> uh, most of the businesses were black owned. Okay. And then there were Asians mm -hmm. that owned a lot of 
the businesses. So, so mostly Atlanta, black and Asian in exactly, this neighborhood. Okay, exactly. I think the riots, like we went through several riots and the, and the Asians left, you know, and I don't know if it was out of fear or, okay. or what. The one that uh, mainly was the Rocket King, 1992. Yeah, 92. That, that was uh, a real deal, you know. Yeah, as a business owner, how, how, did, you, how it, did you deal with that? I didn't personally deal with it, but my brothers went up on the roof all night long to save this building and not get it on fire. Mm. And that's how the business was saved. How long did they I go I think on? it was like four days. The crucial night was that first night because there was no national arts or anything. And so, therefore, they had to stay on the, the roof. And what about this place has, what has it meant to the community and what has allowed it to endure? Besides God blessing me, the number one reason why this business has survived is because we love our customers. We literally love our customers. It doesn't even matter what race. If they come through this door, they're going to be greeted by one of us. After we see them two or three times, we're going to start asking, now what's your name? And if they start asking for certain types of merchandise that we don't carry, and the next thing they know when they come back in, we have their product, they know that we care about their business and that we're nice to them. This community really is like family. When I'm in here sometime, baking late hours, there's always somebody watching out for me, you know. And so when one is hurting, we reach out. And we still reach out. Fifty-five years later, we're still reaching out to help people. And I know that they'll do the same thing if we're in a bind. My next stop was Best Buy Meat, a small butcher shop on Crenshaw Boulevard that's run by a father and son duo, Walter Hart Sr. and Walter Hart Jr. For Hart Sr., who grew up in Topeka, Kansas in a large family, the importance and value of food was imparted to him from a very young age. When I was younger, I remember having saucy, but not that much, because dad didn't let us eat beef. So we didn't have beef. I didn't have beef till I come to California. Yeah, I don't know what dad's reasoning was behind it, but it might have been money. <laughs> yeah, I imagine beef is more expensive. You know, when you got 14 guys and two parents, that's 16 tables you got to set plates for. And uh, he was very careful in the buy. We had a lot of chicken, a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey, a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey. <laughs> Did you have a lot of chicken and a lot of turkey? We had yeah, a lot of that's... chicken <laughs> and a lot of turkey. Because they made it all kinds of ways. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, the ladies knew how to break it down and take it literally off the bone and do stuff with it. You know, you didn't just get a turkey drumstick. You know, they would break all that down and, and just spread it out so it would feed a lot of children. You know? And then what is the story of, of your business, of Best Buy Meat? How did, how did that come about? I've been in the meat business since I came out of uh, teaching. I taught over at El Camino College. Okay. Yeah, and I loved it. You know, I loved the students. I loved the whole the whole deal. I just loved it. You know, I had to come out because I had to have a transplant in my lifetime because I had gone into kidney failure. Okay. I knew nothing about the business. I learned it through another friend who put me into a program that taught me meat cutting. Okay. And I, I, I just loved it. I've been in it, you know, going on 40 some years you know. you know chicken sausage has really become a staple for the black community especially in Los Angeles is it health is it religion is it both is it what do you think that, that comes from uh, it's a little bit of both because uh, we have uh, Muslim customers come in as well I've been shopping here for at least 20 plus years and as well as um, it's much more of a healthier alternative well, I looked at it because, you know, a lot of people weren't, uh, one, they couldn't afford it. Right. We get down to the basics of it. So we were getting stuck with a lot of red meat. And but then that, I, would, I would tell them the benefits. Yeah. 
not for me to make the choice for them, but to at least know that they have the option. Okay. You know, when you cook a Hillshire in the skillet, you got plenty of grease you can pour over and go out and put it on your car. You have plenty of armor oil. Mm. We don't play that game. We keep it simple. It's an all-natural uh, product. We don't put any MSG, any nitrates. We don't use any nitrates or any chemicals in there at all. We don't buy stuff that has chemicals mm -hmm. in it, you know. We just do the chicken. Which one is spicy? Yeah, this one? That's spicy. All that spicy. It's all spicy. Yeah. <laughs> it's got really kind of mellow, herby, cinnamony, warm spice that I really like. It's hot. Is it? It's the right amount of hot. Yep. It's not overdoing it. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice little kick, but it's not. You can still taste the sausage. You taste the sausage. That's what I'm saying. Yep. But this place has been here almost 40 years. Is that right? Probably seen a lot of things happen. Probably a lot of things come and go. Of course. What are any observations that you have about this neighborhood and what you think that this business, you know, means to the community and means to the area? We're definitely a staple in the community. Yeah. Um, there's not too many mom and pop butcher shops or anything like that here on the West Coast. And customers should really appreciate that. It goes a long way. Well, Senior, what's, what's it been like to, to work with your son? Well, it's been great. It's an experience that I think every father would like to have. I just happen to be special. See, now he has his own son. He gets to see a lot of the things and hear a lot of the same things that he heard, but now you see it, you know, because when his son comes to the store, we're all his little workers. Yeah, Third great. generation of yeah, great to have in, this, around. in this place. Yeah. I'll show you a picture of it because he's such an adorable little boy. Mm -hmm. That's Messiah. Oh, that's very cute. That's his boy. My grandson. The chicken sausages at Mama's and Best Buy were both delicious, of course. But they, like all of the food we've shown on this season of Off Menu, mean a little more than what's just on the surface. Food in LA, at its best, is much more than simply fuel to get you through your day. There is also love, pain, ties to family, reminders of struggle and where you came from, and most importantly, maybe, an expression of unity for all of us that live in this massive city that can sometimes be beautiful and cruel. It's the idea that, as cliched as it sounds, well, it's a cliche for a reason, because it's true. Food brings us together. And we're like, Mom, I just want a ham sandwich. <laughs> and she's like, bread and ham, but why? <laughs> <laughs> so the next time you're feeling a little isolated, a little disconnected from your fellow humans, hop into the car and go for a drive. Go to a new neighborhood, go to a new restaurant, and strike up a conversation with a stranger. It won't solve all of your problems, but a good meal will probably make you feel a little bit better. Oh, a chicken's not a mammal. A chicken's not a mammal. What is a chicken? It's a bird. You need to retake science. <laughs> you need to retake science. You got a chicken mammal? Yes. Let me read this answer to you. Okay. Is a chicken a mammal? No, <laughs> chickens are birds, which is a different group of vertebrates than mammals. Just like I told you, Vesta. Thank oh you, case closed.